Hi, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. I don't have any makeup on. Um, as you can tell, I'm still a little sicky. I don't know. I think it's just the weather. Mm, that light just went out. That was creepy. Mm, cool. Um, but anyway, I think it's just the weather. But I'm a little stuffy and my eyes are really, really itchy and I'm just not gonna um, put makeup on and like irritate my eyes and I have an eye condition anyway I think I mentioned that in one of my videos before it's called keratoconus and basically the cornea of my eyes are stretched really really thin um so it always feels like I have something in my eye um and they're really really dry and itch and I'm not really supposed to rub them which makes it hard to like wear makeup because I do absolutely love makeup and I have a ton of it which is terrible. Um, but I have to get my eyes fixed and eventually I'm going to. Um, but yeah. So anyway, you're just going to have to deal with like this today. So sorry about it. <laughs> but anyway, I would really like to thank everybody for tuning in today um, and watching my videos. I hope um, that you will like and subscribe to this channel if you do come across it. Um, I'm really trying to grow my following. I just think it's really important to keep the names and the faces out there and it would be really really cool to have like a big following of people that tune in um, once or twice a week whenever I'm able to upload um, and get these out. But we're going to be talking about a case in Illinois today. I almost skipped it because I crossed it off my list like that I did it but I didn't do it. I just did the research for it and got it all done um, and then I was looking and I was like Oh no, I, I skipped it and I don't want to skip anything. I did that once before and I didn't mean to. Um, I just, I think I need to stop crossing them off before I actually record it because then I get confused because I really cross it out too. Like I don't just like nee, 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 a little line. Um, but anyway, let's get into what's important. Today's video is going to be um, a story in Chicago, Illinois. We are making our way through our stories um, for one a missing person in every state. Um, I know with Delaware we had a few, but those cases, I mean, it was just hard to find information. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of information for some of them, um, but I wanted to get their faces out there too, you know? But anyway, the one we're talking about today um, is about a little girl that went missing when she was just two years old um, in Chicago, Illinois. So let's get into it. Play the intro. Mary Agnes Maroney has been missing for 91 years and 10 months. She was born on May 9th, 1928, and she went missing on May 15th, 1930, six days after she turned two years old. Mary Agnes lived with her mother and her father. Her dad's name was Michael and her mom's name was Catherine on the 5200 block of Wentworth Avenue. Catherine was pregnant at the time and the family was unfortunately very, very poor. Um, and so this led Michael, the dad, to put an ad out in the newspaper in the social services column asking for help for his family. On May 14th, a woman by the name of Julia Otis stepped by the house. She claimed that she was from the social services department and was sent there by a woman named Alice Henderson. And she said she was going to help them. She spent time with Mary's family and gave them groceries and offered to even take Mary Agnes with her to California for a few weeks. But her mom absolutely refused to allow that to happen. Like, that's so weird, right? Anyway, Julia came back the next day and she brought money and more gifts with her for the family. And she even brought stuff for their new baby that was going to be born. Julia offered to take Mary Agnes shopping for more clothes and shoes and the parents said yes. They thought that that was going to be an innocent trip to the store. Mary Agnes was going to come back with beautiful new shoes and clothes. Julia then took Mary down the street and walked off to the store and they were never seen again. The next day, Mary's family got a letter from Julia Otis and the letter said that she took Mary Agnes to California and that she'd be back in two months. Two weeks later, a woman named Alice Henderson sent a letter out to the family and told them that Julia took Mary Agnes with her to California and kidnapped their kid because she was quote unquote love hungry. 
she was love hungry because her own husband and her own baby unfortunately had passed away the year before. Alice Henderson never wrote the family again. And Julia Otis was described as a woman who was about 22 years old. She was well-dressed, but she had protruding teeth and she had a cultural voice. She also never wrote Mary Agnes's family again, and she was never identified. Mary Agnes's story was highly publicized and very widely covered in local media and national media. In the 1950s, a woman named Mary McClelland came forward and made claims that she was in fact Mary Agnes Moroni. She had actually been adopted um, within the same year of Mary Agnes being kidnapped. And she'd even looked a lot like Mary's siblings, so they thought for sure that this was going to be it, like that she was going to be home. The reunion with Mary's family in 1952 was also highly publicized. It was all over the place that she was going to be meeting this family again and that this family was going to be reunited. The reunion was held in Chicago, Illinois, like I said, in 1952. A doctor said that they were able to prove that she was related by her teeth and her teeth alone. Um, however, Mary Agnes had a scar from an umbilical hernia surgery um, that she had fixed shortly after she was born. And this woman, Mary McClelland, claiming to be Mary Agnes Moroni, didn't have the same scar. And the doctor said that she would most likely or more than likely would have the scar even as an adult. Mary McClellan's mom said she had gotten her from the doctor and that the same doctor that she said she got her from was able to confirm that she was given the baby. He said that they delivered the baby on November 17th, 1927, and no records were actually ever provided to prove this to be true. Eventually though, through DNA, it was actually proven to be false, that she was not Mary Agnes Moroni after all. And then this woman, claiming to be Mary Agnes Moroni, died in 2005. Mary Agnes had five brothers and two sisters, and they never stopped looking for her. And I don't think that um, the the relatives are, st like, I think they're still looking for her, you know, like they never gave up hope that um, she was gonna be reunited with them one day. She has blonde hair and blue eyes. She is also left-handed, and she has a scar, like I said, on her abdomen from the umbilical hernia surgery that she had fixed. Her last, her last name might also be spelled Maroney, as in M-A-R-O-N-E-Y. And if you have any information regarding this case at all, um, please reach out to the Chicago Police Department at 312-746-9690. I'd love to know what you guys think, of course, as always. Um, please leave your thoughts and your comments in the section down below. And I do ask that, of course, that you remain respectful. Um, you never know who might see this. And just just be respectful, please. Um, but I'd love to know what you guys think, of course. And please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you do come across it. Um, I'd like to also um, ask everyone to keep Naomi Arion's family in your thoughts and prayers. She was 18 years old. Um, and went missing. And unfortunately, they found her remains, um, I believe yesterday or the day before. And um, it all happened very, very quickly. I think um, she went missing, I think on like May 15th, it was around then. Um, and they've been looking for her. And I think like they, 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 she was kidnapped. Um, they caught her on a video recording. Um, and somebody said something to her and she, they got in her car or something like that. Um, and, and they unfortunately found her remains, um, which is really, really unfortunate. I mean, unfortunate's not even the word. Um, you know, you always hope for a better outcome, of course, and it's just heartbreaking. I've been Googling it, um, like at least twice a day through, you know, ever since I heard about it, just to, um, see if there were any updates. And God, I was so hoping for her family that they were going to have, um, a different outcome. It makes me a little emotional. Um, but yeah, I I really, really would appreciate everybody, of course, keeping Mary Agnes Moroni's family in your thoughts and prayers, and also Naomi Irian's family in your thoughts and prayers. If you are a praying person, please pray for them. Pray for, pray for anything for them. Um, and of course, remember at the end of the day, we are all somebody, someone, and I will see you in our next video. Thank you for watching.